close your eyes and take several deep breaths to relax. Breathe in the sun. Know that with each breath you are aligning with the fire element more closely. Feel the atmosphere around you. Notice how the sun dances upon your face and body. Can you hear it as it caresses you? Now breathe deeply again of the sun's energy and know that as you do, you are calling forth your own personal salamander to help you in meeting the king of the fire element. As you relax, begin to visualize the scene changing around you. You are standing at the base of a great volcano. The earth about you is charred and parched. Steam rises sporadically from the cracks and fissures in the earth. The sun is strong upon your face. The whole area appears parched and lifeless, but you are stimulated. You know you would not be so if there was no life here. Although the sun is warm upon you, it is not uncomfortable. In fact, you find it powerful and stimulating. With each breath, you seem to draw more of its energy into you, as if you can draw it in and ra radiate it back out again. As you breathe deeply, the earth trembles beneath your feet. You raise your eyes to the mouth of the volcano above you. Steam and flames erupt suddenly from it filling the air above with heat and light. The colors of the flames are intense, so strong that the sun is almost lost behind them. And then, just as suddenly, all is still. You are not afraid. Instinctively, you know that in spite of the activity, there is no danger. In fact, you are thrilled, and you feel more alive than you have felt in ages. Then again, the earth trembles beneath your feet. Some of the fissures and cracks about you widen. Fire and steam pours out of them. It is beautiful. You are amazed at the play of the flames through the steam as it rises up, shifting and dancing. And then you notice it seems to be moving toward you. At first fearful of what this temperature might be, you are surprised to find it warm and soothing. There is a powerful gentleness to it that borders on the erotic but energizes you on all levels. It is a fire that doesn't burn. As it forms around you, the volcano disappears from view, as does the sun. You are immersed in the swirling steam and the dancing flames and then it begins to change. And as you peer through them, you see the vague outline of a form. The flames and steam actually seem to be dancing about it, as if it were the center of their life and activity. Somehow you know this must be Djinn, king of the element of fire. You whisper his name, more to yourself than to him. But the flames respond. You feel warm air rush over you as though being breathed upon. 
The flames and steam shift even more. The figure becomes even more defined. The second time you speak his name, this time louder, bolder and directly to the form, the flames rise in response, increasing their activity and giving forth more light. The steam shifts and begins to dissipate. The figure becomes even more distinct and even begins to move. A third time you speak the name of the djinn. You sing it out loud and clear, passionately, as if you are becoming inflamed yourself. The steam parts, the flames rise and then disappear. The djinn steps forward to stand before you. He is tall and looks like the traditional genie of lore. He is dressed in brilliant reds and oranges, and you are sure you can see tiny flames dancing in his eyes. His face is passionate and strong, and the energy comes off him in waves, like heat rising from the road on a summer's day. Occasionally, tiny flames leap up and dis disappear around him. He motions with his hand to follow him, and you feel a rush of warm air. He begins moving to the mouth of the volcano, and you follow. At the edge, you look down and see the molten earth and fires of its heart. Dijin reaches down and draws a tiny flame out of the volcano. He then takes one of your hands and holds its palm up. Your eyes widen, fearful of what the flame might do. You try to pull back, but his eyes fix yours, and a wave of courage and strength fills your being. Your hand steadies, and you nod to him. He places the flame upon the palm of your hand. You laugh, for it tickles. It doesn't burn at all. Dijin smiles briefly at your amazement and wonder as you watch the flame dance within your hand. Fire is essential to life. Yes, it can burn and destroy, but it also soothes and creates. You could not exist without fire, nor could anything upon this planet. Wherever life exists, fire also exists, from the heart of the planet to the heart of the human. His voice is filled with great warmth and compassion. You expected one of such a, an element to speak with more force of great fires. You expected his energy to overwhelm you. When we learn to control our passions, we have control over that which we create. When we have no control over our passions, our inner fire, we are at the mercy of whatever fire may be burning. With no control, life plays you rather than you playing it. The key to controlling the outcome of one's life is control of the fire elements. You must develop the courage to dance with it, burn the old with it, and stimulate new birth. The djinn takes the flame from the palm of your hand and drops it back into the volcano. As he touches the center, a ripple of flame spreads out from that point to form a circle of fire. In the midst, images begin to form. You see the earth and the sun and the force of its fire as essential to the life upon earth. You see the changes in seasons and how the raising and lowering of temperatures is a catalyst to the stages of growth for plants, animals, and humans. Then you see yourself and the fires of your own metabolism. 
You see how vigorous physical exercise stimulates activity of the fire element within you. You see how it is tied to sexuality and eroticism, physical and mystical. Then the images change. You see the passions you have had and did not act upon. You see those times you used your fires to show courage and strength, if only to fulfill the responsibilities of your life. You see the ideals you wished to explore, and you see where you stepped from them onto easier, safer paths. The images shift again. You see times in which you expressed courage and succeeded. And you see yourself shining with fire at such times. You see the times you went through great changes and upheaval, and you see your own fires growing stronger to help you. You see the many times things have ended and people have left your life, taking with them some of your fire. And you see the many times new people and situations have arisen, stimulating new sparks and fire for you. Most never understand how to use my element. Fire gives courage and strength when there is no one else to depend on. Fire enables us to leave which is no longer beneficial. Fire enables us to see new opportunities. Yes, fire destroys, but you cannot have destruction without creation. Learning to work with fire is learning to follow your own passions and your own rhythms. Every fire burns unique to itself. It has its own dance pattern. It has its own rhythm. As you follow your own rhythms, your fires grow stronger and you find that that which did not work now will. As you learn to attune to the element of fire and those of us who work and live within it, your passions for life will increase. You will find your own personal rhythms for living, and you will find the courage to follow them. It is then that life takes on new light. And no matter what the ashes of your present life circumstances may be, you will rise from them like the phoenix. From the center of that circle of flame, a single flame extends up. It shifts and stretches, rising into the air above the volcano. There you see it forms the mythical bird of rebirth, the phoenix. Then it disappears. Vision extends his hand back into the molten lava of the volcano. As he withdraws it, you see he is holding a piece of flint. He places it within your hand, and as he does, flames and steam rise from all the fissures around the volcano. The sun reflects off it, and for a moment you are sure that that flash of light off the flint had musical sound. This is a sign of my promise to work with you and help open the mysteries of fire to you. Fire is powerful, and many societies made sacrifices to gods and goddesses of this element. It burns while it heals. It destroys while it creates. It strengthens and impassions. By learning to work with it, you will learn to bring your greatest passions into manifestation. 
you will learn what you must realize in order to fulfill. It carries great responsibilities. If you accept this, your passions will grow. You will become catalytic in your own life, but in the lives of others. For good or bad. You will learn to burn away the dross of your life to reveal the light of gold beneath. You will find the law of cause and effect manifesting more clearly and more rapidly for good and bad. You will learn about physical and spiritual alchemy. Your old self will die so that the new self may be born. If you are unsure of this commitment, leave the flint upon the edge of this volcano. Here it will always remain until such time as you choose to take it upon yourself. The choice is always yours. The flames from the volcano rise up, extending ten feet above. Dijin nods to you and steps off the edge onto the midst of the flames. They dance around him, growing stronger and brighter, and then they drop quickly down into the volcano itself. The only sign of Dijin is the warmth that rises from the lava. Hold the piece of flint before you and examine it. You look at the flames of the inner volcano and the rays of the sun dancing off its edges. The act of striking flint to make fire is powerful and significant. You breathe deeply of the ethereal fires within the air about you. You make your decision and the image of the volcano and the sun begins to fade. And you find yourself back where you started at the beginning of this meditation.